All right, in the last video, we got a simple rigging set up for our character and parented that to our skin, to the skin. And I want to point at something real quick. If we select the skin under modifiers, notice there's uh, an armature modifier was added. Uh, make sure that that is there. Uh, if not, whenever you go to parent it, when you hit, um, when you select both of them, and hit Control P to parent it. Make sure you choose an armature deform. That'll be important in the export. So we got that set up, and if we select our bones, go in pose mode. We can rotate arms. It looks like the skin's flowing with it. Um, I'll rotate the head around the z-axis and get some turning. Uh, so it looks like it's starting, but we want to make sure everything's lined up right. So we'll go back to object mode. Notice if the armature is selected. We only have three options over here, but if the skin is selected, we have a lot more options, including weight painting. Uh, this is where we go in and act, make, uh, actually describe how much of the skin applies to a certain bone. So we need both objects selected, and the one we select last is the menu we will see. So select the bones, then hold shift and select the skin. And you should have the weight paint option. And once it's like this, you can holding shift and clicking on a bone will show how will show the weight painting. If we want to go through and check each each bone, make sure the right skin applies to it. So maybe on the neck. Okay, it looks like the neck doesn't have much going on there. So I'm gonna turn the radius down here, something kind of small to work be able to get in the spots and the weight uh if it's one we're, we'll add to it and to take it away we'll turn you can turn the weight all the way down to zero and then it's like an eraser so just go through carefully uh either add or remove weight to the skin for and describe how much of the skin needs to deform with a particular bone There we go. Looks like the that'll deform the neck good. And sometimes odd little things will show up, but you just want to go through bone by bone and make sure that bone seems to apply to the right position of skin. And the automatic weighting does pretty good on, on the 3D models, not so much on the 2D models, so it should be a good start. Uh, looks like that got the, the whole hand. Probably don't need that stretching up the forearm. So I'll see if I can erase some of that up there. Eh, it's not really gonna hurt anything. And just go through and make the little adjustments until it seems like the right skin is being affected by that. Holding shift to click a bone. Backbone looks like it gets most of the torso. Um, the upper back could probably do a little more. That should be moving the shoulders and maybe the chest area a little. There we, there we go. And just slowly adjust it. So I'm going to pause the video while I go through and make the adjustments and just slowly and carefully at this step until you feel like that's the right skin to be for that bone to affect. For every single bone. Okay, so that came out pretty good. Uh, I didn't have a whole lot of adjustments to make. Whoops. You want to watch out for stuff like that. The right foot was collected, selected and accidentally clicked over here. And definitely don't want, well, I said that backwards. Definitely don't want the right foot moving with the bone of the left foot. So watch out for things like that. But um, just kind of go through and check every bone. The automatic weighting did pretty good on mine. Uh, the only big adjustment I had is here. The leg bones seem to go a little bit high. The upper leg bones. So I cleared some of that out. The upper leg bones kind of went halfway up the back. And just yeah, make sure that the right bone is moving the right skin. And once you get that set up, take your time. Be careful with that. Uh, 
do you feel very confident that it's all moving the correct spot? And take this away, some of this away. And once you get that set up, what you want to do is come back to object mode. It's like just the bones. Go into pose mode and then check every single one. So select this, hit R, and then push X, Y, or Z to restrict it in axis. So R and then X will restrict the rotation to the X axis. And just check everything to make sure it seems to be moving correctly. And while checking it, you can like RZ, get this head turn. While checking it, kind of maybe pick some position. Uh, think about the positions that you'll want for the animation. And give everything a thorough check. And so I think I'll go ahead and check that. There's no need to watch me check every single bone on, on here. Just make sure it rotates correctly. And then we'll be back to set up the animations in, well, a split second after the video editing's done. Okay, so I finished the check. And one thing that you want to make sure and do, I'll rotate this arm somewhere, is uh, hit A to select all the bones. And then pushing Alt-R will reset all the rotations. And most of your movements should be done with rotations. If you think about it uh, on, like, a human body, or on our bodies, the bones only turn. They don't move off to the side or move off in different directions. They don't scale up or scale down. So everything should be done with rotations. Uh, Alt-G also clears any other movements. But remember, Alt-R to clear the rotations. I'm going to come back to object mode. I'll do it here. Go ahead and save it. And after all that checking is done, we can come over to the animation tab. And set up our animation. Kind of zoom in on the viewport over here, which has the bones uh, set up, ready to be moved. Already set to pose mode, and we have a preview here without the a preview here of what it's going to look like. And then down here is our dope sheet. That's where we put animations together, so you can kind of see the timeline. And to specify more than one, some different parts. Uh, different animations to apply. You'll select Action Editor, create a new action, and give it a name. So I'll call this Idle. And I'm just going to do 20 frame animations for the example here. So make sure you put the start and end point to 20. So for idling, I think I'll start and end in the rest position. So I'm pushing. Put the mouse up here in the viewport because the buttons do different things depending on where your mouse is. So with the mouse in the viewport, push A to select everything, then Alt R just to confirm everything's rotated. And to insert a keyframe, push I and insert one for location, rotation, and scaling on all the bones. So now they're kind of locked in place. And if you want to clear a keyframe, you can push Alt I. So Alt I and you can delete a key. Oh, uh, and be able to delete a key, keyframe. I'm not sure why that didn't, um, why that was giving me that message, but Alt I is the de delete the keyframes. And then a 20 frame animation, I want that to be smooth, so I'm going to go one frame further, and on frame 21, I'll insert. Uh, keyframe that matches everything. So that way at 1 and 21 is the same, but I'm going to reset the loop at 20 so that it starts over one frame before our starting point. And I think I'll stick another one in the middle. Uh, whoops. Select everything. Hit I and set the keyframes for back to the resting point. So this is the idle animation. So I want the character to basically just stand there and breathe when nothing's going on. So these middle points here, like I guess about frame five or six, uh, 
it might feel a little more natural if it's not exactly split up. So I'm going to go instead close to the middle, but not exactly the middle. Whoops. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. So I want this bone. Oh, not that. That's the neck bone. The upper backbone. I'm going to take that and rotate it just a little. If I hit rotate right here, the mouse is really close to it. If we bring the mouse away from it and push R, we have a, a longer arc sweep. So to breathe in, I'm just going to have the character bend that bone backwards so that the chest swells up. The head turns up a little like he's breathing in. And I'll kind of maybe swing the arms backwards a little while that happens. Rotate X. Rotate X. And just kind of straighten up the arms. So now if we go back to the beginning. Oh, whoops. I just undid. I forgot to do that change. Let me try to make that change again. Have to save the changes after we make them. So select that bone, R, bend it back just a little so it looks like the character's kind of breathing in. Then I'll swing the arms down a little. Same thing on this side, R on the X axis, rotate on the X axis. And now hit A to select everything and insert a keyframe. For location, insert a keyframe for rotation, insert a keyframe for scaling. If we go back to the beginning and play with those motions saved now, you can see there at the beginning, it kind of looks like that player's breathing in a little. Oh, the arm went a little far. far. So I'm going to go back to frame six and push uh, Alt I to clear this keyframe. So now those keyframes are gone from frame six. And I don't want this one moving back so far. So I'm going to bring that back just a little. Select everything and insert a keyframe again. And give that another test run. Going back to the beginning, hit run. And you can see that first part looks like the character's breathing in. And we're already up to 12 minutes. So I'm going to do the same thing in the second half here. And then put a walk animation together and we'll talk about that at the end to try to keep this in one video. But it's essentially the same thing we did for 2D just for a 3D. Just move the legs to the correct position for a walk. So here's that idle animation. Just kind of looks like the character's breathing, swinging his arms a little, waiting to do something. So when we stop moving, this is the animation that we'll play. Uh, and I'll put a walk animation together. Uh, very quickly here to try to keep this under 15 minutes and just point at it at the end. But the same process, just set the keyframes, move the bone, or move the bones, set a keyframe, uh, give it a check. If it didn't work out, undo it or clear the keyframes and try again until it looks like you want it to. Oh, one very important part though, make sure you close this animation or close this action before doing the other one. So make sure that's closed and then hit new. Otherwise you will make a child of that action. And we want two separate actions, not a child of the action. Uh, so I'll be back in just a second with this thrown together and we'll look at the result of it. Okay, so I only have about a minute left before to stick under the 15 minute limit, but I did this with three keyframes. So here's the walk animation. And on frame one, I moved the left leg forward, bent the knee, turn the foot up, the left arm goes back, and the, wait, I said that backwards. The right leg forward, left, uh, right foot up, and right arm back, and then the left leg goes back a little, and the foot bends down, and the left arm bends forward. Set that for frame 1 and 21, and then right in between, I did the opposite position, uh, right and left leg. So that way it alternates back and forth and just swings the leg forward and the arms kind of go with it. Uh, so hopefully you can see what I did there. Get a little trial and error. Just three keyframes. Uh, one leg comes forward and make sure the foot turns up when it does while the other leg goes backwards. And that's about the 15 minute limit. So I'll see you in the next video to export these.